you know, in this world, we are filled with worries. Every day we are worried. We are a worried people. If, I, if we are not worried, I think we are dead. Because somewhere along the line, we will think about things that matter in life. You heard the two testimonies here, and they, they talk about, why, why Hong talk about being worried. And, uh, and also our, our whole human life is about thinking about things that will happen in the future. I was, a couple of weeks ago, I was in New Zealand. And I landed there not knowing that they had a massacre of 50 people in a mosque. 50 people just gave their life. Uh, the bloodshed. You know, we, we never know what world events can happen, what affects our life. The whole nation took on a mourning position. And I think when we look at life, life can be long, life can also be very short. And sometimes we are not certain how life plays out for us. And so today I want to talk about a very simple thing that Jesus talked about, our life. You know, many of us come here smiling on our faces, happy, dress our best, seated there. But we don't know what is happening deep down inside. Whether we have health issues, we are suffering from a disease, no one knows unless we tell. You know, life is full of stress. Even going for a medical checkup is a stress. I asked my wife, you know, she said, actually, I'm very, I'm very healthy. On. The, only thing, the only time I'm not healthy is when I'm outside the doctor's clinic. Because it, it stresses me out. And my blood pressure goes up. And then the doctor takes a reading and said, I must take blood pressure medicine. Actually, I'm fine without the doctor. <laughs> but thank you, doctors. I think it's not just for you. But we, we feel pressure everywhere. Even waiting for a plane to take off, we feel very pressured. Waiting for our exams, we feel very pressured. You know, I think many things happen. You know why? Because we don't know the future. If we knew the future, we wouldn't be so pressured. Even watching a soccer match, we feel pressured. Because my team, Manchester United, I know you might throw eggs at me, might be losing. And I don't know whether they will win or they will lose. So I sit there, I bite my teeth, I eat my popcorn, and I hope they will win. Actually, if I knew the results, I'll be okay. But because I don't know, then I feel that often the future, not knowing the future, the unknown future gives us the worry that we have each day. Your wealth, well, a lot of us are affected by it. And so what we do, the norm that we do is to save up as much money as we can while we are alive. Work as hard as we can. You know, when I first started as an engineer, my company had five days a week. And I was not satisfied. I said, how can you work five days a week? Let's work five and a half days a week. So I made everybody work five and a half days. Um, then after that, I found out, actually life is not about working only. Then I changed it back to five days a week. And everybody was so happy. Because that is life. We need to relax. We need to do things. We need to accumulate well, but we don't need a lot in that sense. Job security, housing loans, business contracts, many things affect us. Day-to-day -day living. Even when we play games on the computer, you young people, stressful, isn't it, when you lose? 
Oh, I must win, I must win, must win. And day and night, they press the button until all their fingers uh, turn blue. Just to win. <laughs> okay. So we have a, a sports competition coming up next month. So you visitors who want to join us, please join us. We have, bas we have uh, basketball, we have a uh, marathon, a short marathon, five kilometers only. And if you can't do five, it's fine. We, we give you a baton and you pass it on to the next person. <laughs> a good idea, isn't it? Uh, so, if you only can do 500 meters, then after that, you pass it on to the next person. <laughs> okay? <laughs> we have uh, futsal, if you are in for it. Uh, we had golf last year, but we decided not to have golf. We will have uh, dodgeball. Wow! And so, we are thinking of even fixing up a dodgeball court for ourselves. So, many things happen in our life which we are worried about. Even studies. Children's education, we have to save up money for them. I save up my entire savings just to send my three kids to university. Fortunately, only one of them wanted to do dentistry. Cost me an arm and a leg. Okay. If all three wanted to do dentistry or medicine, I, I'm here maimed. <laughs> without arms and without legs. Okay? Because... It costs so much nowadays for education. And so we think about all this. And some of you may be retiring very soon. So you must save up the money. We, we think about, wow, how long am I going to live? If I live to 100, I've got to save another 40 years of funds. And I think that's where we get worried because we are unsure of the unknown that is going to happen. One of my church members passed me a book recently while I was preparing this sermon. And it's called Ikigai. This book, The Japanese Secret to Long and Happy Life. I thought, wow, what a timing to get a book while I'm preparing this message. So I, I was very curious. I looked at the title. I said, I must finish this book. I took it up, finished it within a few hours. And uh, I thought, wow. So many things in it, but I want to share with you some of the, 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 the stories that they talk about in this book. It's actually in the context of Okinawa. Okinawa has uh, the most people who are more than 100 years old. Okay, so if you want to be more than 100 years old, and you want to live healthy until then, these are some of the tips. It says, go out into the streets, and say hello to people. I do it every day. How many of you do it? Oh yeah, you all won't make it. <laughs> you all won't make it. Nobody do. I also didn't do. <laughs> so I was checking, I was doing a checklist and wondering whether I can make it or not. To 100, you know. I, I, first one, fail. Second one, care for my vegetable garden. Wow, you all must be meat lovers. Huh? No need vegetable, lah. just eat steak <laughs> and lobster. Uh, that's how it works. Eh? You know, so I, I look at it, I say, ah, yeah, second one, gone. Third one, <laughs> spend time with friends together. Whoa! I said, wow, that one I get, I score. Because my whole church member want to invite me for lunch. Every one of them lining up. But you know, with all this lunch, it's no free lunch. Comes a question, Pastor, what do I do? Uh? Uh, Pastor, pray for me, uh, I'm sick. <laughs> you know? So with the lunch come work. And so I think that lifespan comes down from 100 <laughs> downwards. You know, with that friend. But you know, I, I think at the end of the day, we all want a joyous life. The, the other one is very interesting. This, this lady said, try not to cause problems. <laughs> try, try. She said, try. We all cause problems, <laughs> okay? And when we do that, we stress everybody out. And we talk about worrying. Of course, you get worried because you cause problems to other people. You don't know when they will come to your house and throw red paint. <laughs> right? 
because you owe them money. <laughs> you cause problem to them. <laughs> you know, so ah, the next one, next one. I like the next one. He says, have fun. Well, only the bank fellas know how to have fun. We are all serious people here. You know, we need, we need to look at life holistically. Don't just work every day. Save up money all the time. I tell myself, you know, I, I, I spend an arm and a leg sending my children to uh, university. Now they finish. All three of them are finished, uh, completed their studies, working. I said, now all the rest of the money is mine. I'm going to spend it on myself. Right? And sometimes you think about it, is it right? Is that the way life ought to be? We think again and see how God has prepared us on a journey that He is happy with. And so He says, cultivate good habits. Wake up at four in the morning. Latest, six in the morning. <laughs> okay, none of us make it all one. Hallelujah, you're good. <laughs> Exercise daily. Nurture friendships. Live an unhurried life. Uh, that means that uh, when you walk, walk slowly. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Don't use up all your joint muscles uh, so that next time it can last longer. I think that's how you interpret it. Be optimistic and laugh. So I think all of you are doing well. You know, but they got one caption which I which caught my attention. It says, Hara Hachibu. If you know Japanese, means when you eat, eat only up to 80%. Don't eat full. Don't go for your eat-all-you-want buffet. Okay? <laughs> because it's not going to help you. Okay? And so I think very good values. But then again, this is what I call a humanistic approach to long life. How the world thinks long life can be reached. But what did God say? God says abundant life is what we require and abundant life starts now. And so I want to share with you today, have I got the slides on? Some areas that, oh, I don't see it here. Some areas that will help us live this life of hope. And my living hope I want to share with you is in Christ. Because He came and He shared one simple verse which I want to read to you this morning. And all of us will bear witness to what Jesus said. I mean, I'm not trying to be religious today, but just trying to quote what the Bible says. He says, Therefore I tell you, Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. Oh, what a, what a powerful beginning in His ministry. What you will eat, or drink about your body, what you will wear? Is it is not life more than food and body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do, they do not sow, reap, or store away in their barns, and yet the heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Isn't it, isn't it something to think about? Actually, the, all the more that we worry, actually we shorten our life instead of lengthening our life. And we didn't even get an answer to whatever we thought we were so clever about. You know, and I, I as I look at it, Many things happen in my life as well. All of you have a story to tell, but I have a very simple story to tell as well. I started off as an engineer. We started this church when I was 21 years old. 38 years ago, so you can calculate my age. <laughs> 59 this year. And uh, it started off with a few people and as an engineer, we do things very differently. I used to run a factory. I used to run a factory in Shalam. I was employed, worked for a Singaporean boss. 
And, and he first employed me. I, I finished all my chartered uh, professional papers. I went, I went to work for him. And when he first employed me, I went into this room. And he was seated in this room. And he had, the room was full of people. You know, and there was one desk I sat in front and I was interviewed by him. I went away and I was just wondering to myself, how come when I went in for the interview, nobody spoke to me? Nobody smiled at me. I went straight for this guy. He interviewed me and I left. I said, what is going on? I found out that he borrowed an office. That was not his office. And that was not his staff. He looked so grand. But he only rented one table. And I went in, wow, fully impressed that he had such a big following. And I took the job. I was the first employee. <laughs> okay. I took the job. And then he, I realized when I call up the office, nobody picks up. <laughs> I said, huh? He said, Actually, you are supposed to be the telephone operator. <laughs> also, you know, I mean, I don't have anyone else. You know, so I took the job and then, I said, then they said, well, this is an engineering manager, big time, you know, engineering manager. I wanted to be an engineering manager all my life. So I said, wow, good job. Actually, uh, he, then I found out there was no factory even. So he said, uh, fine. Uh, I bought a piece of land and uh, you please build your own factory uh, uh, on this piece of land. And after that, you start production and you will uh, do some uh, products and you will you export those products around the world. So he gave me a vision, but he, he didn't give me anything else. So at, the, at that point when I started, I was the only employee with no factory with no car, uh, with a vision. I was thinking, what did I ask for? You know, and uh, I met a friend there. I don't know whether he's here. Henry, where are you? Oh, okay. He was my architect. How many? Uh, 1989. He was my architect. 1989. So I know him before many of you. He helped me build the factory from scratch. And uh, finally, he decided to join the church. <laughs> Actually, he designed this, this uh, church as well when he wasn't attending this church. You know, and I think God prepares a journey for us in life. We are not certain of what things can happen in the future. We don't know. My wife married an engineer. Now she ended up with a pastor. <laughs> if she knew I was a pastor, maybe she wouldn't have married me. <laughs> Isn't it? Oh, why should I marry this pastor? Got no money on. <laughs> Salary also three figures. <laughs> you know? No money on. No security. Our security is in the Lord. And so when I did engineering for many years. I decided, oh, one day, actually, I want to go full-time. I want to help in the church. So I, I told my mom and dad, they sponsored me to study in Australia. I told my mom and dad, mom, dad, I'm giving up my engineering to work in the church full-time. My dad's first reply, and I can remember it until today, who is going to feed your family? That's all he said, and he walked away. Right in the kitchen, he said, Lawrence, who is going to feed your family? I looked at him, and I felt, I felt inspired at the time. I said, God lah! <laughs> Make me upset. I, I mean, I had to give up so much to come to this point. And I tell you as a dad, at least say, oh, I'm so happy for you, even if he's not happy. But he didn't. He said, who is going to feed your family? At that time, my daughter, my youngest daughter was two. My middle son was four and my eldest daughter was six. You can imagine a scenario like that. 
where families are young, everything is needed to put on the table so that we can feed the family. So he was a very practical man. Who is going to feed your family? And during that time, when I was in the kitchen, I thought the kitchen was the best place to talk all these things. So I told them in the kitchen. I think if I told them anywhere else, <laughs> if I was out there with a the ch- chanko, my dad was doing his gardening, he would have thrown the chanko at me. Okay, but I, I chose a kitchen, very safe place. My mom was feeding my youngest daughter at the time, two years old, and porridge, I remember very vividly. And she was putting the spoon into her mouth when I broke the news to them. And she got a shock, and she pushed the spoon. <laughs> so my youngest daughter, <laughs> no, I can still remember. And now my youngest daughter is already 27. You know, we don't understand this whole journey of life. We don't. Because we, don't, we can't see in the future. We only can guess. And that's why it stresses us out. Because we don't know. But you know, God in His loving kindness has reassured us today that He will care for us. He says, I care for the lily on the field. I care for the bird in the sky. They don't even have to save money and yet they are fed every day. Aren't you more precious than the bird in the sky and the lily in the field? I say, yes, I'm more precious. And until today, I have bread on my table, food in my closet, car to drive, a house to live in, Three lovely children who earns Aussie dollar and send it back to me in my bank account. I don't get ringgit, you know. I get Aussie dollar. (laughs) That's who, that's how God has treated me. And it's an amazing journey I want to share with you. Because my worries are taken by the Lord. I don't have to worry about tomorrow because I know my God takes care of me. You know the time when I announced my resignation as a general manager of a big company in Shalam. My mom was upset. My dad was upset. That year, they decided to sell their house. I, did, I couldn't even afford a house. So I st- stayed with them after we got married. We stayed with them. Couldn't even afford a house. So I stayed with them and, and they were selling their house. So back at the back of their mind, they were telling me, Lawrence, now you look for a house to stay. La. <laughs> Not even food to eat. You, uh, because we are selling our house also, you, now your God will feed you. Your God will give you a house to stay. I was full of zeal and enthusiasm. I said, surely my God will provide. And you know, within a week, I got this call from a lady who gave me a call and said, Lawrence, I have a spare house. Would you like to stay in it? You don't have to pay rent as long as you're in this house for the rest of your life. That's my God. That's the God I talk about today. But I felt very responsible. I cannot take people's things for granted. So every Chinese New Year, I would put in a a red packet. And I go and see this lady. And I think I calculated how much rent that I saved. I put it in this red packet. And maybe my calculation not so good. May not be up to market value. But intentions are very good. I put it in a packet I gave to her every Chinese New Year. Because God, I want to show her, she's not a believer, not a believer. I want to show her my God will supply all my needs according to His grace. And He has. And that's why I can give. Because there is love. And so, I want to challenge you today that this is our living hope. 
He is our living hope. We have something to live for, and that is the Lord. And so I, I, I think when you see all these candidates say, I have decided, one day, you're all going to wear the same T-shirt <laughs> if you have not received the Lord yet. Because it's a free choice that we make. A choice that frees us from worry because you know what? Not only He say He takes care of all the fish in the sea, the sparrows in the sky, you know what He says He will take care of? And I like this the best. John chapter 14, I'll read you a few verses out of it. He says, again, this is right at the beginning of His life, He said, don't worry, I will take care of you because you are more precious than the lilies of the field. Right at the end of his life, he says this. He says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me, which is Christ. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you may be where I am. Isn't that, isn't he an amazing God? He goes away, he prepares a place for me. I just read the scripture. I don't know about you, but he, he prepares a place for me. But this scripture is for every one of us. He prepares a place for us if we, if we believe in our hearts that He is going to come back for us. And that's the worry that is taken off our mind because we talk about unsure of where we are going to. When we die, what happens? Will all my children fight for my property? What happens when I die? What happens when I pass from this earth? And... And Jesus addressed it. He says, when I die, I will rise again. And that gives us hope for the future because He has given us a fresh mandate of life eternal and life abundant. And it begins here. And I want to share that with you because today is Easter Day. Easter Day is about resurrection of Christ. Christ rose from the dead. And so if you look at a few points that I have today, it says, even the, talk, even the disciples doubted it. The disciples says, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know the Father as well. From now on, you will know him and have seen him. And that is his promise to us. So don't have to worry. God has undertaken even the most miraculous journey of our life. Right to the end, He has given us hope. Hope for the future. That He is there to come back and take us back into His glory. He said He's going to build a house. I can imagine this mansion. So many rooms. I only need one room. Me and my wife only need one room. Even if I got 10 rooms, I only can sleep in one. I, sometimes I wonder... Why people buy 10 cars? I wonder. Maybe one day drive one, one day drive one. Oh, feels good, isn't it? I think maybe like, I don't mind, you know. But we only, can, we only can drive one at a time. You try driving two cars at a time? <laughs> I haven't seen anyone do it yet. <laughs> we only need one. We need one life and one happy life. Not the humanistic way of planting vegetables. That doesn't make us happy. But of walking with the Lord. And knowing that He will lead us on and on. Amazing God. And so this Jesus is our God. That has resurrected from the dead. And so Easter becomes such a wonderful message for us. Because if He can rise from the dead we can all rise from the dead once we are dead from earth, alive in God. 
we can walk heaven way. We don't have to worry anymore. So I'm not afraid of death because it's my door to a new life, a heavenly life. But I'm not sure about you if you do not know Jesus. You may be wondering, oh, I'm not sure. Today you can make it sure. Because that's how I first come to know Jesus. And that journey hasn't changed. God has been good to me from day one until now. God provided. You know, so when I resigned from my company, I'll tell you a few more stories <laughs> since you're here. I have a lot of time. I don't know whether you have time or not. But I have a lot of time. Uh, you know, I, 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 was, uh, I was working part-time. I decided to go, I decided to, go uh, to serve in the church. So uh, my boss said, okay, okay, if you can't be GM for me full-time, you'll be part-time GM. I said, wow, where in the world has they got a part-time GM to run a factory? <laughs> factory runs non-stop. When they do production, they do production non-stop. And they want a part-time GM like me. Okay? So I said, okay, la, part-time. So how much are you going to pay me? So they lay their cards on the table. The same salary as you were full-time. I said, oh! <laughs> Suddenly my eyes brighten up. Wow, this is amazing, isn't it? Okay, I take. Uh, if you need me so much, I take. <laughs> so every morning I was in the office in uh, Shah Alam. Every afternoon I come into church to work for many years. And then I think my boss <laughs> in Singapore, he, 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 when he comes down to KL, he doesn't do anything else because I run the whole factory for him. Production, export to Norway, Sweden, to Japan, everything else. I, I do everything. And he comes, he spends one afternoon. He comes in, he plays golf in the morning, straight away to Saujana Golf. And uh, afternoon, he chats with me on the way to the airport. I drop him at the airport. And uh, the conversation is 30 minutes in the airport. So if I drive faster, it's 20 minutes. If I don't like to talk to him too much, I drive very fast. Then he closed his eyes. Okay. And so that was our conversation. He leave everything to me. And so I run the whole factory. And so I think when you look at uh, opportunities like this, we need to see how God can place us there. So I was there and he decided one day, I must get him back full time. So he said, I've, uh, Lawrence, I bought you a new company car. I was part-time that time. I bought you a new company car and you just go to the showroom and pick it up. I paid for it already. I went there. Wow, this huge limousine car. I said, whoa, it feels good. And I drove it back to my house. My, I got a small house that I rented that, that was given to me to stay, Remember? I, I told you somebody gave us a house to stay. So I, I parked the car right in my garage. Brand new car. At that time, I just started working in church. My church members came to my house. Wow, I also want to work in church. <laughs> you, you, where do you get this car from? <laughs> I said, uh, 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 long story, long story. You want to work in church? Can. <laughs> I didn't tell him that he came without the car. <laughs> but, uh, you know, God actually takes care of us right through the whole journey of life. No need to ask, and God is there. And I think this is the God that we talk about, and this is the Christ that heal all our sins, that forgive all our sins, and call us to a life that is full and abundant. And this is the Christ I want to share with you today. This is the resurrected Christ. That He gives us hope that we don't have to worry about where we're going to live after we pass away because He is going to prepare a mansion. Mansion. Many rooms. Now it's just which one I select only. And He will bring me to it. He says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me and that you may be where I am. 
amazing God. And this is the God I want to share with you. Jesus is this God. He conquered death. He rose from the dead. He is alive now. And He can save you and me. And this is the testimony we talk about each Sunday of the goodness of the Lord. So we pray for people here, if you're worried about life, if you need a touch from the Lord, you need healing, we pray for you. We know God is in this area of touching lives. And finally, He will return in His glory for us. Amen? You looking forward to it? Amen. I think He will, he will return in a wonderful glory. And I look forward to it. I hope I'm alive when He comes. But if I'm dead, I'm also okay because I get to meet Him before you. <laughs> Isn't it a privilege? No more worries because God has not only cared for me in this life, He will care for me in the future as well. Amen? This is a good God. Why don't we stand together.